Hi, it's Stacey Vinson, your Instructional Leadership Director. As promised, I went back to Jan Price's classroom at Kendall Whittier and she sat down and made a video for you all that goes more in depth as to the Unravel method. I really encourage you guys to watch this longer video and try some of these strategies in your classroom. Jan has found incredible success with her student achievement over the years that she's been using this method and it really it, it works at any level from young kids up to teenagers, even adults. It is a strategy that really gives people the skills to no longer be passive readers, but to be very active readers, reading for understanding, as well as requiring students or teaching students to get into the habit of going back to the text to support their answers and to support their thoughts, being able to prove it, being able to justify their answers. So it's a great method. I really encourage you to watch it. And at the very end of the video, you are gonna get a special treat with Jan Price's students showing you the Unravel Cheer that they've created that they do in order to help them remember and get excited about reading and using the Unravel method. Thanks again to Jan and her students. Hi, I'm Jan Price from Kendall Whittier and we did a teaser uh, last week about a wonderful test-taking strategy called Unravel. And today I'd like to go into a little bit more depth for those of you that want to hear more about it. Um, Unravel is a great test-taking strategy. I, when I first introduce it, I really get my kids pumped and I say, so I have a strategy that is going to help you do awesome on tests. Not just for students, um, but for even adults and college students, they use this. So we get real pumped about it. I tell them that if they will do this, they are going to do so well on their tests. And we talk about how we don't want reading to be passive, just boring. When we read, we want it to come to life and have active reading. So Unravel has eight steps. Uh, the first one is simply underline the title. A lot of times the students forget to actually read what they're underlining, but um, it's very important because this often gives the main idea and it, it can help actually answer one or two questions in um, the test itself. Then the next step is predict. Now predict the, t the story what do they think it might be about so if the story is entitled dolphins in the sea uh, they know it's going to be a, of course about dolphins but what do they think they're going to learn about dolphins so we talk about that we use their background knowledge what do they know about dolphins uh, I encourage them to look at the pictures look at your title skim through it see what key words are, are popping out and then um, the next one is letter A and that is, are you reading the questions? And we talk about, well, why in the world would we read the questions first before the story? Well, because it's like a map and it gives you direction, what I'm looking for. And I don't want to waste my time with information that may not be important. I want to get right to the heart of it. So we read the stem of the question and we circle important words. So it might ask what the main idea is, so I know to look for that. It might say, um, what do dolphins eat? So I know I want to look for that. So this really gives them some guidance and a focus. And then the next one is another letter A. Are you circling the important words? So this begins the actual reading of the passage. And this is hard for a lot of my students because they think they uh, need to circle or highlight every word in the passage. So we talk about, well, really, it's only going to be one or two main words. What kind of words? Well, always names, numbers, dates are important, um, character traits, how are they feeling, and they get really good at this. And then when they go back um, to answer their questions, they're able to look at those key words and they stand out for them. And then um, another thing that they do is also number the paragraphs. And they do this early on. Uh, and this is important. Usually the state tests have the paragraphs numbered, but um, sometimes, like on poetry, it might just have line 5, line 10, so I go ahead and have them 
uh, put the number for every line of the poetry. And we talk about why this is important. If it says to go back to paragraph four and define what this word means, they better go back to the actual paragraph. So that's helpful. And then um, begins the eliminating of the wrong answers. And my colleague, Shauna Wright, talked about this. Uh, we, I talked to them about how the test takers are actually trying to trick them. So they better figure out which ones they know right away are not right and eliminate those. And then um, I actually make them prove it. So if they circle letter A uh, about for an answer, then I say, okay, why did you choose letter A? Prove it in the text. So they have to go back and find it in the text and show me. So we use that textual evidence. And then the last one, of course, is to double check their work. And um, we talk about how important that is. Sometimes um, you try to go through it too fast. So go back and really make sure you know why you answered the way you did. And then I will show my students, um, I'll hold up two different papers sometimes. They've taken a reading test. And I will say, so look at this test and tell me, did this person unravel? And they will say no. And I'll ask, well, how do you know? Well, there aren't words circled and the titles aren't underlined and they haven't X'd out the answers. Well, guess what? And of course, I'm doing this anonymously. And I say, well, this student did poorly. What about this student? And they see that this test was unraveled. So we talk about how we know that. And guess what? They did really well. So it really does make a difference. And I do teach them, I just want to say, on the state test, um, for third grade at least, they can mark on the passages. And a lot of students are reticent to do this. But they can mark on the passage. And then in the answer box, I teach them to eliminate, but make the X's outside the box. That's also allowed. So anyway, I hope this helps. And uh, please try it. Look into it more. And I hope your kids do great this April on testing. Thanks. Eliminate.